Hello, good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to have you all here. All of you keep your video cam on and mic off during the session, if possible. And if you have any questions during the session, please type in the chat box. And I would like to hand over to Preeti. Hey, thanks, Renita. Hey, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. And it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today. Ms. Aishwarya Sridhar, who is going to talk to us about biodiversity conservation. And uh, Ms. Aishwarya Sridhar is a 23-year-old wildlife filmmaker and a presenter who loves to explore and wilderness. Her debut documentary was telecast and DD National and has helped to protect the last remaining wetlands of Mumbai. She's working with the local fishing communities, NGOs, and the state towards policy-level protection for wetlands in Maharashtra. And she's the youngest member of the State Wetland Brief Documentation Committee. She, she's recently completed filming the most iconic and photographed wild Bengal tigress from the forest of central India. During the COVID-19 lockdown, she directed and presented Midpod Digital Series for WWF India, which focuses on inculcating the love for wildlife in children through origami. Currently, she is the host for Nature for Future on Discovery Channel India, a unique wildlife chat show focusing on India's most endangered species. Her work has been featured in international and national newspapers and magazines like BBC Wildlife, Guardian, Mongo Bay, Digital Camera, Times of India, Sanctuary Asia, to name a few. Once again, hearty welcome is Aishwarya Sridhar and stage is all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the lovely introduction. Uh, I hope I am audible. That's right. Uh, okay. Yes. Can I take it as a yes. yes. You're, you're audible. Okay. <laughs> so, um, thank you, Riddhi yeah. Foundation, for inviting me and uh, you know, giving me this chance to address all you young eco warriors. It's a, it's a pleasure to talk to all of you all. And uh, our topic for today is biodiversity conservation and how, as an individual, you guys can play a role in uh, protecting our planet. Now, when we talk about biodiversity and conservation, uh, two different things come into the picture over here. So it's very important to understand what is biodiversity and what exactly is conservation before we start adopting practices which will go a long way in greening our earth. So uh, luckily for me, when I uh, got to know about biodiversity, I was pretty young. I grew up in a place uh, named Panvel. I don't know how many of you all know about it. It's very close to Mumbai city. Now, Mumbai city and um, wildlife and greenery doesn't sound very, uh, you know, together. They are completely apart. I, I agree on that. But Panvel is a very uh, green place, at least used to be when I was uh, much younger. And my childhood, I spent chasing butterflies and seeing fireflies in my balcony and you know, watching flamingos and painted stalks and quails in my backyard. That is how I remember it. But, you know, over uh, as of now, the things have pretty much changed. Panvel is no longer the beautiful green city it used to be. But at least it's better than Mumbai. Uh, that much I take it. <laughs> and so um, when I spent this time, you know, running behind everything that creeps, crawls and flies, uh, I realized that all of this, all of these living things are intellect and they are dependent on each other for their survival. And as I grew up, I came to know that this is exactly what biodiversity is all about. It is everything, every living being, right from the tiniest microorganism that you can find to the largest uh, mammal or the top apex predators like your uh, you know, largest mammals like elephants or predators like tigers, leopards, lions, all of them. Everything, the entire web of life uh, is a part of biodiversity. So we are all a family of over 13 million species across the globe. And together, we make a beautiful world. If one of us, like even one species in that chain gets affected, then the entire balance is tilted. That's exactly now what is happening because of the COVID-19 pandemic. This pandemic is primarily the... Uh, the product of our uh, intervention in this web of life, 
the illegal wildlife trade that was rampant in the wet markets of Wuhan, China. And that's one of the primary reasons we intervened and the balance got tilted. And the result you're already seeing, you're experiencing the result is the pandemic. If you don't want such future episodes to happen, then it's very essential that we play a role and we step up and we do something about it. Now, uh, scientists are predicting that in the next 30 year, years or so, okay, uh, by the time we are in 2050, that is, they say that 30% of the world's biodiversity will be extinct. Now, by extinct, I mean uh, wiped out from the face of this planet. That is a very terrifying reality to me because every year, if 1% of the world's uh, flora and fauna is going to disappear, then that is something which is very alarming. And the rate at which I see us progress, the rate at which we are, you know, trading our ecology for our economy, I really feel that we are working to make this prediction come true, which is very bad. Like the outcome will be probably the, our worst nightmare. So it is important that we understand what is conservation, what is biodiversity, and really uh, go out there and start raising our voices. And I'm really happy that uh, Riddhi Foundation has chosen to uh, do this these sessions, this boot camp, and also the fact that you are taking up this lovely campaign called I Pledge Three, which is you know it's, it's a very uh, unique way to engage people at various levels. So uh, when I was you know, uh, living in Bombay, I have actually seen the way people uh, have traded our environment for development. And when I say traded, I'm not talking it in terms of the fact that, you know, it's a man versus nature thing. Like, I'm not against human development or economic development for that matter. It is very essential that we improve our economy. But what I feel is that you should not lose out on your natural capital just for the sake of our GDP. Both should progress hand in hand. That is exactly when you have sustainable development and you have a holistic future then. Uh, near Mumbai, Mumbai used to be a very beautiful uh, city full of wetlands and water bodies. And you know, as years have passed, all these wetlands and uh, water bodies have been reclaimed. What uh, initially was around maybe um, 3,000 to 4,000 hectares of wetlands, today not even 10% remains. So you can imagine the level of uh, degradation that has happened. And uh, to, uh, very close to where I live is a coastal city called uh, Uran. And it had a lot of wetlands when I was a child. But today there's only one, that is Panjai. I would like to give you all an example of Panje because uh, that it, it proves how individuals can take up uh, conservation of microhabitats like these just in your surroundings and protect the biodiversity at a local level. Because uh, it's it's I I know that it's not possible that for us sitting in a city uh, to go out and you know pro possibly uh, work towards protecting the Gangetic River dolphin in the Ganga. It's not possible to do that. But uh, yes, at individual level, we can adopt practices and which will together have a collective effort in reducing the carbon emissions and thereby helping these uh, species to thrive. Also, in your immediate surroundings, take a look at what is around you. Use, protect that first and then go towards a wider area. So Panjai is a perfect example of how you can use a very simple technique of photography to bring about a change in uh, the way you know people see our environment. So first of all, I'd like to show you all a video of how beautiful Panjai really is. Let me see now if I hope this works. Okay, I'm sharing my screen right now. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Okay, let me uh, play the video and I hope you can hear the audio as well. Oh, 
Okay, so um, that was Panje. I hope you all could see the video properly and the audio you all could listen as well because I put a lot of bird calls and all of that. So yeah, that is how beautiful Panje really is. What I showed you was just a glimpse of the entire wetland. It supports more than 1.4 lakh migratory birds every year. And that is huge. Okay, for a wetland which is so close to uh, the Mumbai city. And uh, today, Panje is on the brink of extinction. I'll show you all uh, a little bit on how the entire wetland has been, you know, surrounding wetlands are lost for development. Okay, let me check one second. Uh, okay. Yeah, so this is, uh, yeah. These are from some of the surrounding wetlands where, as you can see, with the bird life being present, uh, landfilling activities have begun. They are already being, uh, you know, filled. And this is Panje. At the back, you can see the amount of development that has come about. You have factories, you have residential complex. And now the government, uh, not the government, I would say the local development authority, which is CITCO, uh, they want to take the whole uh, wetland and convert that into a very big luxury apartment complex. Uh, this is the wetland in the peak of summer. It's beautiful. And um, about two years ago, uh, I made a documentary on the Panje wetland. It was, in fact, my first documentary, which I had done. And uh, the documentary came on DD National as well. So... Uh, after that, after the documentary, uh, you know, many people came to know about the wetland. There was a huge campaign that followed for, uh, afterwards, wherein people from across India realized the beauty of this place. And they wrote letters and they did, uh, you know, signature drives to save it. Uh, and after that, the local development authority, which is SIDCO, what they did was they went and constructed a 71 sluice gate right on the inflow of the tidal waters, which feed Panje. So Panje being a wetland, it is fed by tidal waters. So how these sluice gates work is that during high tide, they close. 
so water does not enter the wetland whereas during low tide they open up so whatever water remains inside the wetland that also drains out leaving the wetland completely dry the what you saw earlier that had turned to this come there was not even one bird and i had very uh, nicely taken a group of media people to show them the beauty of panje during peak winter and this is what they saw i the media person who was with me uh, he looked at me as if i had gone crazy because i had you know really uh, told him that this wetland is so beautiful so many birds i had given him a whole checklist and what he saw was there was not even a crow okay so he was really upset but what followed what we discovered he possibly made up for that lack of uh, seeing any birds this had been made functional and there was a whole uh, campaign that you know followed after that wherein i clicked photographs with gps uh, as you can see over here even the surrounding mangroves had you know completely dried up because of no water and you can't cut off water supply to mangroves it's a crime because there is a bombay high court order preventing that so this was complete contempt of court that was done by sidco we fought tooth and nail we sent pictures uh, the local fishermen uh, you know came out and supported us uh, they also campaigned with us there was a lot of ngos that took up this matter and finally collectively what happened was after the entire one week of struggle the sidco gave up and they opened the gates so the wetland which looked like this which is completely dry with no water turned to this overnight okay the wetland was restored uh, birds began chirping again at panje but the battle is definitely not over panje still continues to face a very huge threat from uh, sidco as well as uh, navi mumbai special economic zone which wants to convert this into a money spinning real estate complex which is something uh, which we don't want that to happen because not only would the ecology of the place go and panje supports birds insects fishes uh, apart from the biodiversity it also supports the livelihood of the local fishermen now when we talk about conservation and biodiversity we also need to look into the aspect of livelihood or oh, because the local community when you include them in your conservation approach they will definitely be more involved and something that benefits them they will definitely take up the cause with more love so it's very essential that in any measure in any uh, as even after you grow up and you decide to uh, you know bring about policy changes or whatever it's very essential to include the local community go work with them and the end result will be much more better and panje supports almost uh, 2500 uh, fishermen's livelihood so we definitely wanted to protect that as well and because we told them that they were very happy to work with us on this and the, but like i said panje still is facing the axe a uh, very recently about 2 weeks ago i got some images from a local fisherman named parag uh, he sent me these images of mangroves which were completely hacked okay this is about 61 mangrove trees which were brutally chopped uh, by sidco's officials they are said to be sidco's officials the complaint is still on all these images have been submitted as proof so over here images played a very huge role because these images acted as proof and gave the you know people filing uh, the petition at the bombay high court an opportunity to demonstrate the truth as well so when you show something with proof when you have visuals to back your claims that will definitely help the decision maker to take the right decisions so yeah this i'll come to that a little later okay so here you have panje is just one such example okay of an ecosystem that was on the brink of extinction it is still on the brink but we are definitely trying to revive it and hopefully the maharashtra state government is with us and they are very keen to declare it as a bird 
uh, reserve as a flamingo sanctuary to be more specific so it's hopeful that in the near future panji does get that designated protected uh, status and the birds can you know forever be happy and safe at that place so like panji there are a million panjis out there in the world we just need to find them and uh, do something about it so it's very i feel important that we first look at your surroundings look first in your neighborhood protect these micro habitats like panji because that is where biodiversity conservation can happen at a very local level after that go global definitely but think first in your own surroundings and each one of you can play a huge role in doing something uh, very significant it's just about adopting simple practices in your daily life which will go a very long way in greening the planet in uh, you know reducing carbon emissions globally just imagine if each one of you all and your friends and your friends friends all of them decide to adopt these same eco friendly practices which i will be highlighting now the effect will be huge it will be a multiplier effect so the end product what will uh, the end uh, total cumulative effect what will come about will be so humongous that it will definitely make a difference and it will bring about the change that we are trying to achieve over here so let me quickly turn on screen share again and i will take you all through the so some very simple uh, you know changes in your lifestyle which you can uh, do and that will really go a long way in helping our planet okay so first and foremost Uh, most of you all uh, i was told that you are between the age group of 18 and above so you all definitely must be having college right so when we go to college usually we don't like carrying water bottles we prefer going to the canteen and you know buying a bisleri or any uh, you know water bottle plastic bottle that we get and then we drink and whatever in our campus we just throw it somewhere outside the campus when we leave and that's it we have it's forgotten but instead if you can buy refillable bottles fill them in your college canteen no problem or you know fill it from home and take it during the pandemic obviously you save littering you protect your uh, image and surroundings from getting dirty and at the same time you reduce the amount of plastic that is in our environment so that is one step that you can decide to practice uh secondly is e bills e receipts e magazines and e newspapers you should subscribe to these instead of printing everything because why printing requires paper and uh, over 4 billion trees every year are cut for paper just imagine if all of us were to go digital then the amount of trees that will be saved will be like really really massive so definitely when the next time you go to a shop and many shops are nowadays practicing this especially uh, apple does it when you go and purchase something from them they don't give you uh, printed bills anymore they ask you for your email id and they email the bill to you or the receipt to you that's much better uh, same thing goes for your e magazines and newspapers switch your uh, subscriptions to online editions it's much more eco friendly you have it in your tablet or your phone your laptop wherever you go you can read it on the go and anyway now with the pandemic on it's better if we don't you know bring paper into our homes so this this will definitely play a very vital role in our in protecting our environment think before you print be it college stud- study material your office materials uh, we usually tend to take you know print things out but unless and until it is absolutely necessary don't print you have them in your uh, laptop desktop 
you can always read it and refer it from there if you are scared that it will disappear it might get deleted you can always have a backup on a hard disk or maybe on a cloud service but try and not print unless it is very vital and even if you want to print go for printing both the sides of the sheet instead of just printing on one side and you know the other side remains blank you're wasting paper that way so when you print both sides you are using paper wisely and uh, efficiently fourth one we all have uh, a two wheeler at our home now india is one country which has a lot of two wheeler in every household i'm pretty sure most households have two wheelers even if they don't have a car your two wheeler is a big big guzzler of petrol or diesel and that is a huge factor contributing to climate change and global warming reduce your carbon footprint the next time when you want to purchase or a two wheeler or you want to like uh, change your old two wheeler go for electric okay electric the uh, electric scooters electric bikes they are the future they will they're greener the carbon footprint is much less and that way you are showing to the world that you care about your planet segregating between wet waste and dry waste okay these are uh, this is something which a lot of people are practicing nowadays your uh, dry waste includes all your plastic bottles uh, wrappers and boxes okay all of those wet waste is obviously your vegetable peels and any food related items are your wet waste when you make the segregation what happens is that if you live in a house or uh, which can uh, you know has which has a garden or maybe uh, a terrace where you can use the wet waste to make compost then that will be even better that way you if you have plants in your house you can use that to uh, act as fertilizer you you will compost the wet waste and you get fertilizer and then you can put it back into your plants if not no problem at least segregate it and give it to your uh, waste management authorities when they come to collect it that way what will happen is that your wet waste will uh, go into recycling whereas your dry waste also goes and you know meets the plastic recycling uh, center or the designated recycling units it goes to otherwise it is definitely not a eco friendly practice what i really find very fascinating in panvel area is that they have this song which uh, you know plays for on the vehicle which comes to collect the garbage so that song is kind of ingrained itself in the minds of the local people so you hear children and all humming it and automatically they know that to remember to segregate wet and dry so it's a very novel idea which the local municipality uh, authorities have thought of and they're doing this reduce your water footprint Uh, next when we talk about water footprint we all are aware of the fact that you know one should not uh, you know leave your tap running uh, you must uh, close your tap when not in use but a lot of times we forget the other ways in which we can do water ma- uh, water management as well the first one that i'd like to touch upon today is your washing machine it's a very simple thing for many of us and i have seen this with my friends as well what they do is that they continue uh, they they put their washing machine multiple times in a day they run it like every now and then whenever they have little little bits of clothes one it consumes too much electricity second it consumes a lot of water and that water is wasted instead what you do is that you keep your uh, clothes pile them up for one day and at the end of the day you wash it or say in the beginning of the next day you wash your previous day's clothes so that way you running your water you are running your water, washing machine only once in a day and uh, you save energy and you uh, conserve water as well second is your taps now sometimes when taps leak 
we don't immediately go and you know uh, get them fixed i have seen people you know tap is leaking like little little bit small drops are falling they feel so what it's very little the leakage is extremely uh, minimal so it can be ignored but tiny drops make a mighty ocean remember that so even if there is a slight leakage in your tap your faucet uh, anything try and get it fixed asap and the third one is when we brush our teeth this most of the times i myself used to uh, blunder in this when i was little i used to keep the tap open while brushing my teeth but whenever you go to brush your teeth close your tap after brushing open it and you can uh, rinse but while at least brushing don't allow the water to run because that really wastes the amount of water so your water footprint can really be reduced if you adopt these simple practices conserve energy at home now i'll give you one example which i picked that is of your washing machine and the way we dry our clothes now um, india is a place which has extreme summers okay most of us what we do is that our washing machine we uh set it on fuzzy logic and you put it on wash and uh spin dry so what the clothes that you get are nearly dry instead you can obviously follow this during monsoons because at that point uh, you need to get dry clothes but during summers when you have hot sun shining outside acting like a dryer set your washing machine to just wash or uh, you know uh, wring the water off your clothes squeeze them and then hang them nicely out to dry one you save a lot of power from your washing machine consuming it that way your amount of uh, all these appliances also emit uh, you know uh, emissions which are contributing to greenhouse gases so you can conserve uh, and you know reduce climate change that way so this is something which all of you all can adopt if of course your home supports a place where you can hang clothes out to dry if not then you you may not be able to do this most of the times when we are told to plant trees we we all we all plant trees right but planting trees doesn't mean that you, know, you just go and pick any tree and you plant it try and plant native trees to that particular place because native trees one thing is that they are very very resilient and their chances of survival in that particular area will be much higher than a foreign tree so in a state like maharashtra probably i will pick trees like neem like mango these are native trees to the state so their chances of survival in the existing conditions will be much more and when you plant trees just don't plant them also uh, look at uh, you know ensuring that they are they are watered regularly and you take care of them so you're planting trees does not just end with buying a sampling and planting it in your uh, backyard or your neighborhood also take care of it and encourage others to do that as well this point is uh, mainly for people who are uh, you know doing jobs and they all have you are looking for uh, investing options so this is obviously for college students this won't be applicable because you all have just uh, you know in college you'll you'll still have uh, to take up jobs so uh, for people higher in the ladder of environmental consciousness you all can uh, choose to invest in companies which are environmentally friendly okay uh, those companies who have lower carbon footprint so pick companies like them and invest in those companies what happens is that uh, polluting companies they are discouraged one from uh, continuing with their carbon emissions and either way you benefit 
if every person does this then i'm saying there will be a huge effect because uh, if nobody decides to invest in companies that pollute what will happen is that they themselves will either become more green and reduce their carbon footprint or they will run out of business which either way is a win win situation because the pollution will stop so go and go ahead and pick out companies which are really eco friendly and invest in them pressure cook your food correctly now you all must be wondering how does this have connection to biodiversity conservation well this saves your lpg a lot almost leads to a 20% uh, you know save in your lpg consumption and lpg is a non renewable resource so when the demand for lpg is uh, less obviously you know forests and uh, our, our wetlands and our marshes won't be cleared and you in turn protect biodiversity so how does pressure cooking help save your lpg it's very simple normally what we use the method to pressure cook is we count the number of whistles right so it's for dal we have four whistles or if it is uh, for any thing like chole you have uh, maybe 12 whistles i'm not that a great a cook so please don't tell me about the number of whistles if i'm wrong please don't correct me on that <laughs> okay so fresh cooking what happens is that uh, when you do the counting the number of whistles every time the water reaches super heated steam to lift the weight and to release the steam that time you're consuming twice as much as uh, the gas when compared to cooking it more efficiently when what you do is that you allow the pressure cooker to heat okay the water inside to boil reach to super high steam then what happens is in the first time the weight lifts after that you put the gas on simmer and then you time it so instead of counting the number of whistles you just have one whistle and after that you put the gas on sim and then you time it for say 10 minutes or 15 minutes that way your end result uh, will be the same you will still get the same amount of uh, no cooked food but you will be cooking it much more efficiently and you will save your lpg consumption and that way you can even save cost because your lpg cylinder will run longer and you will obviously need fewer cylinders in a, a year and you are also contributing towards uh, you know reducing your carbon footprint a composting in housing societies if you are having a if you are living in a society encourage your uh, committee to segregate wet and dry garbage in every household's wet garbage you you yourself can compost in your backyard in your societies and if you all have trees in your compound then whatever leaves that are fallen on your uh, you know common area that you can pick and you can put that in the composting pit as well along with your wet garbage and the fertilizer that you get will definitely uh, help your trees to grow more healthier and you don't have to buy external manure or external fertilizer for that matter this is again a community based uh, idea or a practice which is solar panels on the rooftops of your society now uh, some societies in india have done this the rest can follow suit if you all really you know press the matter go to your as young people convince your friends in your building to make a representation to your committee to committee members and tell them that this will help save your electricity bill a lot all the common area lighting your corridors your uh, you know a staircase lighting all of that can be powered during the daytime if you have solar panels on your roof the you're getting electricity for free okay and uh, it is also a renewable resource that way you are not wasting electricity either the just imagine if every society in india okay every housing society does this 
the megawatts of uh, electricity that will be conserved is huge and that definitely has a huge reduction in the amount of carbon uh, emissions that we are generating say no to plastic this is something which we all have been told time and again to give up the use of single use plastic why because i put a statistic here a uh, 1 million plastic bottles are sold every minute and only 6% end up being recycled so just imagine the rest 94% end up back in our environment now i'm pretty sure the rate at which we are you know throwing and littering plastic one fine day there will be only plastic but no planet okay our planet will just get drowned in plastic our oceans are already choking with it uh, there was a study which i read a few months ago i don't remember where the study was based but the results of it were that 100% of the sea turtles okay in that area which they had uh, researched had plastic in their stomach now plastic is a killer not only for the sea turtle but for any animal that consumes it so you are literally killing the biodiversity by consuming by using plastic switch to cloth option co cloth alternatives like for plastic bag use a cloth bag use a paper bag during the pandemic time as well uh, if you are using a cloth bag you can always wash it so that way is again safe and but really say no to plastic in terms of bottles bags straws glasses uh, your uh, you know food uh, containers switch to reusable ones that will definitely uh, have a huge contribution and last but not the least sustainable fashion this is for all the girls and the boys also but mainly for girls because we love shopping correct and we love to buy clothes uh, so sustainable fashion is all about fashion you continue to you know adapt to your fashion trends but at the same time you also think about our environment and you know that you are you conscious of our planet how i'll tell you you have the first model which is rent lease and swap now uh, yes now during covid uh, you can't you know you know you don't know from which uh, person the clothes are coming but this you can practice within your household at least so in for children and for college going students i have seen this we have a program coming up and you know you ha- you have to buy a a uh, dress for specific to that event usually what happens is that we end up buying it instead if we can find a relative or a friend or a cousin who already has a similar dress what we can do is that we can lease out that dress or we can uh, you know rent it or you swap it with the person you give something from your wardrobe which that person likes and you take that dress in exchange that way you are not contributing towards you know because what happens is that when you continuously buy clothes uh, when you manufacture clothes a lot of uh, water and uh, carbon emissions are also part of that cycle so you are uh, you know a kind of contributing to reducing your carbon footprint here too secondly is second hand and vintage now when we talk about our uh you know when we talk about fashion there is always a demand for vintage clothes a uh, vintage has a lot of uh, you know in terms of price it is highly priced in the market especially when we buy bags and shoes you know vintage designs are considered priceless so when you already have a a dress which is say and from an era like the 90s okay Uh, why do you want to you know throw it out just because it is out of fashion and it's not the current fashion trend these fashion trends keep changing and people who are extremely conscious of trends they try to keep up with it and they keep changing their wardrobes very frequently that is uh, not environmentally friendly try and reuse it if you have vintage clothes good for you in fact i would say that you are more fashionable then 
uh, fair and ethical in terms of uh, purchase of leather okay uh, fashion also has an in, like leather is part of fashion okay leather bags leather shoes uh, but do you, do, uh, do you know that leather comes from the hide of wild animals as well it's not just uh, you know domesticated uh, animals that you know are used to make leather but wild animals like snakes uh, crocodile skin they are also used to make leather handbags and you no know, leather uh, jackets as well so when you say no to leather you are definitely saying no to all the animal cruelty that is meted out to these creatures just so that their skin can be made into a fancy you know dollar priced bag for you instead go for better options more greener options that will definitely uh, protect our planet a uh, repair and redesign if you have a dress which you feel is old and you don't want to use it like for example if you have a long kurti shorten it and make it a shorter kurti that way you get a new uh, dress to wear using your same uh, previous piece itself so these are some you know little ways that you can use you can adopt in your daily lifestyle and which will definitely go a very long way in protecting our planet because i what i personally believe is that when you talk about conservation it is not a man versus nature battle no it's not man against nature it is uh, what usually people think is that conservation is uh, protecting uh, nature against a uh, human development no what it actually entails is that preserving ecosystems uh, protecting our wildlife for a lasting development so it's not just for our generation that we are you know fighting for biodiversity conservation it is for all the coming generations henceforth so my grandchildren your grandchildren our great great grandchildren they all have a planet which they can call a home to a planet which is green and not black so yeah that is what is biodiversity conservation at an individual level this is what you can do it doesn't matter uh, whether you are a doctor or you, know, you don't have to be a wildlife conservationist a biologist or a researcher to be part of conservation no matter what profession you follow you can still contribute as an informed citizen you can contribute so there are a lot of ways which you can do and these are a few of them which i have highlighted uh, you all may you know come up with your own solutions your own ideas as you take the you know the whole campaign forward but uh, i hope you all enjoyed this session and i am open to now questions <laughs> hey thanks aishwarya uh, to all the fellows can you post your questions or you can unmute yourself and go ahead and ask the questions if you have Okay, so here we have a question from Lavanya. Uh, I show you. So Lavanya's question is: Having done what you have done, looking back, what or who do you think would have more helpful during your battle of battle for conversation? Um, hi Lavanya. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, when I look back, uh, who do I think was more helpful? uh everyone played their own role uh, right from the fishermen to uh, the top conservationists whom we approached to the media playing a very vital role in the in highlighting these issues uh, each of us had our own role to play in it and because it was a collective effort that is why we enabled uh, each other and we helped protect that place because if it is a single effort single person's effort it would not have had the amount of impact that it obviously had so everyone played a very important role in it yeah thanks aishwarya hope uh, that question is answered 
and uh, we have one more question from ashok what made you take up the wildlife photography and how were you able to use the pics to make a difference uh, okay uh, so i took up wildlife photography very organically actually uh, ashok sir it was not a uh, uh, you know a decision that i wanted to be a wildlife photographer it just happened i really like uh, going out and pictures i felt were a way uh, in which uh, they gave voices to species and to wild places so i felt that the art of photography i could use it to tell stories of conservation stories of animal behavior use images uh, to express emotions that that animal is uh, you know experiencing that is why i took up wildlife photography to give them a voice and uh, my images i have used in the sponge campaign itself uh, they played a role in fact the images were clicked with gps data uh, keeping in mind that they can act as proof so i submitted them uh, to the person who has filed a petition in the bombay high court and the images have been used as proof in the pil itself and they have also been uh, featured in a lot of uh, media campaigns where we have highlighted the importance of protecting the wetland that's that's so interesting aishwarya and uh, here we have a one more interesting question from shimran so what shimran question is using an electric scooter sounds like a better option than petrol but given that india is still majorly dependent on coal rather than other natural sources like solar etc this would the basically more navigation how can find to this um see when you use electric scooters there won't be uh, mining but what happens is that yes india is definitely more dependent on uh, coal and uh, you know fossil fuels rather than uh, using uh, renewable uh, resources like solar or for that matter wind or, or uh, you know hydro energy for that matter when we have to really say find a solution to this it's obviously uh, at a more uh, centralized level so we need to pressurize our government to adopt policies which will uh, you know say that we no longer are going to clear forests for coal mining very recently i think there was a big issue of a northeastern forest which was given uh, you know they wanted to clear it for coal mining and there was a huge campaign that followed forth and people really stood up and said we will not let this happen so i think it's high time that we stop uh, you know allowing a uh, more amount of uh, coal mining to happen and instead we put pressure on our government to increase our solar energy plants increase uh, thermal energy or in fact increase uh, hydro ele- uh, hydroelectric energy that way what will happen is that automatically the electricity that you get will be a more greener one for your electric scooter as well yeah shreya hope uh, shimran's an- question is answered and uh, we have a one more question i mean rather multiple people question so rose asked uh, could you share your documentary on wetlands so that we could also share those and spread awareness uh, okay i will uh, give me a moment i will uh, uh, i'll bring it on from youtube i'll put the link okay just give me a moment i will it's called panje the last wetland and uh, it's available on youtube you all can uh, watch it there is um, okay uh, yeah i put in the chat box so everyone can access it from there and i'll talk so much send it across to ashok sir or uh, a shimran so that they can forward it to all of you all via email it's also Sh- sure i should that really helps uh, and here one we have one more question rather interesting question from heman who is following us from the live 
So Heyman's question is: uh, Can you suggest the conservation methods for school children, school children, especially at school? Okay, uh, especially at school. Uh, for us, for most for a school uh, child, uh, definitely I would say uh, planting trees. and uh, you know at that level uh, in your school itself you can green your school compound all school children together uh, you all can uh, definitely ask your parents to give you all uh, tiffin boxes which are a more uh, lasting tiffin box like a steel box instead of a plastic one okay do, do that you can do uh, then uh, yes uh, for a school child what else you can possibly do a uh, water bottle anyway all school children have their own water bottles so you know they don't buy plastic bottles uh, and um, paper yes uh, nowadays even school children are printing more and writing less because that that change happened even when i was in school we began printing uh, taking printed sheets worksheets and all to school instead of uh, you know writing uh, in our books again i would uh, tell up for printing as well uh, yeah these are some of the tips that you can use as a school child and mostly what i would say as a school child is that you uh, make people in your uh, surroundings aware you know make them practice uh, to stop using plastic you know as a child I mean, when uh, elders see children taking up the initiative, they definitely feel that you know we should also uh, not lag behind. Uh, our children are doing it, then why not we? See, they can really be the models for change. Yeah, right, Ashwari. Definitely right. I mean, when we do it, they they also ask yes. the same question: Why not we? and uh, yes there are a few suggestions from uh, chat box well. i just remembered one more thing is like, that uh, yeah. your, uh, yes, notebooks sir. right uh, what we normally do is we buy notebooks every uh, year okay uh, like every semester every standard you buy new notebooks right but sometimes what happens is that you have uh, pages remaining in your old notebooks as well from your previous standard so you can tear them out and you can have your you can bind your own books at home it's very simple uh, you just google it on youtube you will find that and you can bind them together and uh, use that notebook so that way what happens is that uh, you are definitely telling your uh, friends as well that i am going green even covering your books with new right. old newspapers if you have at home instead of buying brown paper that is again a initiative which you can take up at home yes yes yeah you're right and looks like yeah like the yeah, people also say the same thing and why why cannot like we can probably suggest education institute institution not to ask students to do such type of paperwork yeah. i mean that's what anusha says Which is which is an interesting thought as you well. You can make them uh, do paper bags, like teach them to make paper bags in school, uh, and possibly you know have a collection of fundraising drive from that. Use that money to plant trees in your uh, school complex. So that way, the children also understand the importance of one planting trees, second of the use of paper instead of plastic. yeah true true so if you have any more questions you can unmute yourself and then uh, go ahead and ask uh, if not i think uh, i think we've covered almost all the questions that people have uh, aishwarya just let me look into chat again for one more time yeah sure yeah 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 sure i i think yeah i, I think uh, oh yeah we have we've got one more question from lavanya again so what lavanya ask is uh, what's one thing that you want us to start doing today uh follow maybe five of the tips that i have given you all that will itself be a great thing i gave you all 14 i think okay at least start doing five yeah right yeah so 
thank you aishwarya i mean it's it was such a you know really an amazing and inspiring journey that you've shared with us okay. definitely and uh, i mean it, it's it's pleasure to like it's it's so inspiring to hear your journey and your thoughts as well uh, be it the simple i mean they look very simple probably yes. but you know but they are very they, they have a, they, their own impact on everybody's life if they start practicing uh, be it a very simple thing that you've suggested or uh, you know i hope everybody start doing if as you said if not all the 14 at least you know half of them if yes. you start doing at least half of them yeah i i'm sure i'm sure there will be a uh, you know some change that we can make it uh, sorry go ahead aishwarya you you, you want to say something i uh, no no i was just saying that, uh, like you yeah. said if someone does even follow seven of them half of it it itself yeah. it, it itself is uh, worth a lot true true definitely right and uh, i'm sure everybody had uh, their own takeaways and uh, like information that you've shared with us and uh, thank you so much again and uh, i we really look forward for your association throughout the pledge uh, which is going you know which we are going to launch uh, the it pledge 3 we're looking we're, we're looking forward to your association and before we close uh, right uh, we we want to take a pic with you and i hope uh, yes, and sure. i really want to ask all the fellows to turn on their video if that's okay so uh, so fellows can you all uh, turn on your video so that we can take a pic with miss aishwarya okay so Ashut or uh, Snidha, can you take a pic for us? Sure, sure. Taking. Just one more. Cool. Thank you so much, Snidha, for that. And uh, th- thanks a lot. Thank about, you. Thank you again, Ashwarya, for joining us and sharing the information. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Kashyap sir. Thank you, Ashok sir. Thank you, Shivrin, for uh, 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 inviting me to be a part of this. And uh, it was really a pleasure to talk to all of you. Thank you. Same here. And all the best for the campaign. I hope you're making a great success. Thank you so much. Th- th- thank you so much. Thank you so much. And yeah. thank you for joining and all the fellows uh, before you drop off we have an amazing session tomorrow as well uh, at 11 am ist so we look forward uh, for you to join there and then we have one more uh, coming up with session tomorrow so just just to give you a bit of a background so after tomorrow's session we'll be diving into the campaign itself so we'll be like putting all your learnings towards the campaign so yep one more boot camp session and then we are good to go yep all right oh uh, thank you so much for your time again and you guys enjoy your weekend we'll see you tomorrow thank you thank you so yeah, much thank you everyone for joining us thank you aishwarya thank you so much thank, thank you bye bye bye